Will the uh, counselors please take their, their seats, please? Will everyone please be seated? Uh, welcome to the uh, public session uh, tonight. Uh, we do have a few speakers. Uh, what I would ask is that you come to the podium, uh, <coughs> state your name, your address, and uh, give us your comments, and try to keep it to uh, five minutes or less. First speaker is uh, Mr. Timson. Good evening. Uh, my name is Francis Timpson, and I own and operate an Ontario Taxi. My address is 329 East 9th. Um, I live over on the east side. And I'm here for, for two reasons. Um, one is for the taxi cab licensing issue that's going on. We still have 22 illegal cab companies operating in Oswego. And we have legitimate cab companies with personal vehicles out picking up people. And we also have people that own cab companies that do not have city licenses to help people driving cabs. Now, I was told by you, Mr. Mayor, to contact Lieutenant C. Roy or the police department or whoever whenever these incidents occurred to report it. I have been doing that. This morning I went down to file a police report and I was told by Officer Brown that the city attorney's office contacted Lieutenant C. Roy and told them that they're not going to prosecute Brian Savage for driving a cab without a license today. I called City Hall and I checked. He doesn't have a city license to pick up people. He was picking up today from 4 a.m. and he was just recently, we just seen him in Walmart picking up or, or down there about 3, 3.30. And, and um, he's picking up relatives, so we're told. Well, if that black guy is his, is his relative, and I'm not prejudiced at all, then I'd, I'd like to meet his brother, okay? Because as far as I know, Jack Savage is his brother and he's white, okay? Uh, number two is uh, I called 911 center the night of graduation, okay, for assist, police assistance because I had four m male individuals in their 20s, much bigger than I am, trashing my cab, okay. For 20 to 30 minutes, I fought them guys on the corner of Liberty Street and West, West Cayuga Street. One of them guys' heads was put through the back window of my cab. I called up the Oswego PD to find out where the hell they were, and they told me that they weren't dispatching anybody because they were all out on a burglary call. Get that? All of them were out on a burglary call. So I waited the weekend through, and I contacted Lieutenant Seroy, and he said he was going to look into it, look into the police logs and stuff like that. He could find no record of it and could find no record of it 911. So I called up 911. Hey, I made a call. I said, I want the transcript from the 911 record, and they told me I needed the judge to sign a Supreme Court order or some shit like that, some kind of order to get a copy of the transcript from 911. So I says, okay, they're going to pull this crap on me. I got the AT&T records. I made the call. I made the call to 911, and I made the call to the police department, and no one showed. I have two kids. One's three, the other one's nine. Now, if I'm not allowed to defend myself in my cab, which I was told by one member of your police department, a little bald-headed guy, about this high, I know who he is, I see him every weekend working, he's a captain or something. He told me that if I got out of my cab, defended myself in any way, that they were going to impound my van and arrest me. Screw him. Next time somebody comes at me, spits in my face, touches me, threatens me bodily harm, I'm thumping him right there on the spot. I ain't waiting for no police and I'm not making no 911 call because it does no good. Then, 10 minutes later, I'm trying to get rid of these people that are causing all the problems. I take a right on red down here on the corner over here at Riverside. Now granted, there's a sign that says that no, no right hand turn, but I wanted to get rid of the scumbags tearing up my cab. And lo and behold, there's Officer Pirano handing me a ticket for taking a right on red. Couldn't get police protection 20 minutes ago, but he's right there with the damn ticket. Then I get a ticket today. For, for filing a police report parked in front of the police station after I was told to park there by a cop because there was a wedding going on. It's a joke. I'm sorry for getting upset, but this has been going on for what, seven, eight years now? And it's the same crap? Nothing from the city attorneys. I was at her office today too and left a message. I didn't even get a phone call back. Thanks for the phone call. My, my kids appreciate it. That's all I got to say. You, you people need to man up and do their job. I, I know Sean Walker is. I know Billy Barlow is. And I hope you get re-elected as mayor, by the way. I know you are. And the other gentleman that's absent has worked hard 
to put this shit behind us. And it's just not happening because, I don't know, they're afraid of Brian Savage or, or they're afraid of the illegal cab companies or, 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 or what. You have to clean up this town. And I'm hearing, they're doing medical transport. Well, if they're doing medical transport and they're dropping off and picking up in the city, they should have to pay for a city license too. Then, then, then we're going to touch the overloading of the buses. Let's not, Al Chase is sitting right there, 300 people to a bus. Tell me how that's legal. I'd really like to know. Then I got university cops giving me shit because I got a few people over in my cab. I says, you, the minute you ticket one of those buses is, is in the minute. Okay, I, I know. I'm getting upset. Because this has been going on a long time. We're not talking about the death threats, them breaking into my house, stealing my dog, death threats against my daughter, being shot at, stabbed, robbed, and everything else that's been swept underneath the carpet over the years. I know you made an honest effort as a mayor because you took over from the last guy, and yet you tried, but enough's not being done. Pretty soon you're going to have carnage. Pretty soon, because the, the other legitimate cab companies are getting fed up with it. And John Gibson's one of them. They'll probably kill me. But Bob Mills is another one. Okay? He's sick of it. Please do your jobs. Thank you, Mr. Timson. The uh, next speaker is Miles Becker. Mr. Becker. Thank you, Mayor. Common counselors, Mayor, thank you for letting me come up here and try and make sense of some of this action in the city. Uh, I'm worried about him. I have a slight complaint about the flowers being watered. I don't know how much money it takes to buy those things, but it seems kind of strange that the town of Oswego is getting all kinds of paving done, and we're not getting any paving done at all here. We're in the season now, and the roads are in. I don't know why you just can't patch them in spots. Spot patching, Bridge Street, the Legion. Patch it with the paver. I don't know, down there at Forks Road, patch it over. You got 1.5 million, use it. You're sitting on it like everything else. Um, I'm getting a lot of feedback here. I mean, you can think what you want about the bicycle and me, but people do talk to me. And they're running it at like 30 to 1 or 2 that are against this fire department's overtime. One of the main reasons they want me to talk to you about this tonight is the fox guarding the, the hen house. This man had 22 years at the fire department with all kinds of overtime, and now he's the chief. And I don't care what he thinks, and I don't care what he thinks afterwards, okay? Because I know his father wouldn't put up with this kind of crap in that fire department, okay? I've got the overtime list from 13, okay? There's one, and I'm not going to mention names here. I'm not going to get into that. But the one guy's making $130,000, period, in 13. My God, does he have a wife? Does he have a girlfriend he can play with or something? I mean... How come so much? He's living down there. Isn't that a, a violation of OSHA? I guess it isn't because it's PEP. Okay. Isn't that a violation of too much time on the job? I know they can sleep down there, okay, but it's still stressful. Okay? I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. You guys have voted in a 42% increase in taxes here two years ago, a year ago. Hamill did it back in 94. That's almost a 100% increase in taxes in 20 years. You think that you would think, I had to listen to Mercer and Hall and Flint up here, giving the city away back then. Okay, you're not close yet, but you're getting there. You're getting real close. All right, that water contract, and I know it's repetitive here, it's redundant, but it comes up next year, and that's a million dollars gone down the drain. What are you going to do then? Jack the taxes up? Go into the reserve fund? I don't know what you're doing. Quit giving it away. You're worse than a school district. Quit it. They don't need the money down there anyway. They're all living in good houses. Thank you, Tom. As usual, Tom, you've always been nice to me up here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Becker. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who would like to? Uh... Yes, 
I've been away for a while. Uh, excuse me, can you state your name? Sue Matthews. Um, I live just outside the city. I own property in the city. Um, I, uh, one thing I have cautioned you guys over the years is to not write laws that you can't afford to enforce. And I've watched this whole taxi law thing, and you've written a law and you require people to register, get permits. Um, you wanted to do background checks, but I guess the ACLU put a stop to that. Um, so I was kind of surprised when I came back and found out uh, that you uh, gave, uh, well, the, one of the things I was surprised at was another law you just made that unless your taxes and your water bills are paid and your sewer bills paid, you cannot get the use of a city park for your wedding or your event. And that's fine, but it's kind of shocking to me when I find out that the ex-mayor that owes $26,000 to the city and never paid it was given a license to do electrical work in the city. Now, you didn't want cab drivers driving with no background checks. You already know he's a convicted pedophile, but you gave him a license to go into people's homes and work on their electricity? When he owes the city $26,000 that he personally squandered while in office? I, I, I think it's about time you call him back and tell him he needs to make some kind of payment agreement if he wants to keep that license in effect. If he's going to work, he can pay back his debt. That's one of the problems. And I, too, see the gypsy cabs all over the city. If you're going to write these laws, you have to be able to enforce them. The same problem goes for code enforcement. You write the codes, but you can't afford to enforce them. As far as the ambulance goes, I've heard a lot of flack back and forth on this. OK? I don't know if you're an English major that can't add or a math major that can't read. But the ambulance is a profitable business. The firemen don't set the costs. The insurance companies set the costs. You've got one amount paid for Medicaid, another amount paid for Medicare, another amount paid if you have insurance, and another amount paid if you don't have insurance. Mentor makes money on their ambulance. It's a business. The city firemen are making money not because they set the costs. And if they run a second ambulance, they can make more money, not because they set the costs. What our city ambulance does do is people that can't afford to pay receive a reduced rate or charity care because they take care of the people in the city. Their response time is better. Their whole service is better. And any money they bring in offsets the costs other areas that save taxpayer dollars. And the money the firemen make, they spend in town. They don't take it out of town. They pay property taxes on their homes. They spend it in local businesses. It's a win-win to have <coughs> to run a second ambulance with their own fire department. It's as simple as that. Why give the money to mentor and more money to mentor to take it out of town? As far as the tax increase, we've heard a lot about the DPW and the cost of the DPW. When this town was flush and had money coming in from the nuclear plants, the steam station, before the state reduced their property taxes, the, the money was squandered. The money was spent. We used to have East Park, West Park, um, Montcalm Park. The DPW has to take a, care of Linear Park, the Peace Park. We get parts all over the place, none of which pay tax dollars. And I don't think the DPW is any bigger now than it was then, but they got to take care of all the parks. Sometimes it, you have to spend money to make money. And I know Syracuse has pavement machines that only take one guy to operate to fill potholes. Well, you have to pay for the machine initially, but it saves you money on labor. But all these things weigh into the situation we're in now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Uh, there's no other speakers. Oh, I'm sorry. Heath? No, that's okay. Heath Jones, Create Studios. 
Um, I forgot to sign in earlier, um, but I wanted to thank everyone for last Saturday's Tri Oswego. Um, that was one of the best examples I've ever seen of the city, the county, and the town working together um, to put on this great event. Uh, the communication between the police department, the fire department, and the volunteer fire, uh, department in um, Oswego Town was amazing. We had volunteers that came to us afterwards that thanked us for the police department specifically coming by just to make sure that they were okay, they didn't need anything. Um, and as an organization that is trying to bring visitors and tourism and, and things like that into our community, what a great way to showcase our community um, for a weekend. We had beautiful weather, we had amazing volunteers, and we had such great support from our city, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Is there anyone else? No one else. I will adjourn the public session, and we will now begin the regular session. Uh, please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, and it is a hope. Will the clerk please call the roll? His Honor, the Mayor. Here. Councillor Enright? Here. Councillor McLaughlin? Here. Councillor Todd? Yes, excused. Councillor Walker? Here. Councillor Barlow? Here. Councillor Van Buren? Here. Councillor Kapowitz? Here. There are six present, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, on the mayor's report, uh, it might be a little redundant after what Mrs. Jones just said, but I also want to thank everybody that, that made our weekend so spectacular. There was so much going on between the triathlon, we had a regatta, the sea cadets had their graduation ceremony. We had uh, Julian, uh, his 10 again birthday party, uh, and then the usual, mugs and waters, and, and it's, it's quite a community, so he definitely has seen an incredible groundswell of, of enthusiasm that makes our community become a real community, and so we're all pulling together, and we're going to get through it together. Um, I, that's all I've got for this, this, this month. Is there anybody from the uh, council that would like to make uh, comments or reports? Seeing none, will the clerk please call resolution 257? Is to approve the minutes of the Common Council meeting held June 8th, 2015. Councilor Barlow, Councilor Van Buren, any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 258. Is to appoint Commissioner of Deeds. Councilor Kaplowitz, Councilor Barlow. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 259 is to approve use of public space <coughs> Thomas Dunsmore, owner of property located at 33 East Schuyler Street in order to install additional parking. Walker, Walker. Any discussion? Who's got the roll? Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Call resolution 260. Is to approve use of public space. Irene Blake, owner of property located at 57 East 10th and a half street in order to install a ramp. Councilor McLaughlin. Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 260 is to approve use of public space at St. Mary's Church in order to place advertising signs. Councilor Kapowitz, Councilor Enright. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kapowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Please call resolution 262. It was to approve use of the Oswego Riverwalk West area for the Springboard Mural Project. Van Buren, Councilor Enright. Any discussion? Councilor Van Buren. I'd just like to thank Don Matot for her time. She, uh, she has a lot of time putting this together, working with the students and the kids that do this project, which does a great job. Thank you. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Please, <coughs> please call resolution 263. It is to approve use of Franklin Square Park for the big latch on event to be held on Saturday, August 1st, 2015. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 260. It was to approve use of Washington Square Park for Oktoberfest to be held on Saturday, September 19, 2015. Councilor Walker, Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? None, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 265. It was to approve use of the Veterans Park for an outdoor festival to be held on Sunday, September 13, 2015. Councilor Kaplowitz, Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 266. It is to approve use of city properties for the Oswego Bookmobile 2015 summer program. Councilor uh, Enright and Councilor McLaughlin. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 267. It is to approve use of the Christopher Rink from July through September by the Oswego Lacrosse League. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Walker. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 268 is to approve use of the Chris Foley rink for a squared circle wrestling event to be held on Sunday, July 19, 2015. Councilor McLaughlin? Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Please call resolution 269. Is to accept donation of a park bench by William DeLapp in honor of his mother, Margaret DeLapp, to be placed in Brightback Park. Councilor Enright. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 270 is to accept donation of a park bench by the Oswego County Federal Credit Union in honor of J. Michael Parker to be placed in Washington Square Park. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Please call resolution 271. Would be to approve a junkyard license for Philip Gordon and Sons. Councilor Walker. Councilor McLaughlin. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 272. It would be to approve a bid submitted by Bronze Contracting for the demolition of 59 Liberty Street. Councilor Enright. Councilor Barlow. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 273. Would be to authorize the mayor to sign change order number five with Patricia Electric for project modifications to the West Side EFMF and pump station upgrade project. Councilor Kaplowitz. Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? 
Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 274. Would be to authorize the mayor to sign change order number 19 with Blue Heron Construction Company for project modifications to the West Side Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion Project. Councillor Enright? Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 275. Would be to authorize the mayor to terminate the ambulance fee contract with Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. Councilor Van Buren? Councilor McLaughlin? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 276. Would it be a, to approve a transfer of fun, funds from the contingent account to the fire department? Councilor Kaplowitz, Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? Councilor Barlow. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this was discussed in depth uh, quite a few times. And my stance remains the same, saying that these facts, uh, the fact is the, that the numbers, the uh, overtime numbers are just unsustainable. And they're detrimental to the city budget and the long-term and short-term uh, financial health of this city. Uh, we all had a meeting uh, where the fire chief presented a plan that he came up with in which he thought would uh, address the overtime numbers and lower them. During that meeting, I thought we had a unanimous agreement between all of the councilors to enact that plan and follow through with that plan. And at that point, we would allocate the money that's already been budgeted. Yes, it has been budgeted this, uh, this year, but we were holding that money hostage and demanding change. What we're, we're going to approve the money tonight, and the fact is, is there's no change. There's no change in or prediction in the numbers being better. And we're really missing an opportunity here if we approve this to make change and really work for the taxpayers of this community who just had their taxes significantly raised uh, three years ago so and two years ago. So uh, I encourage my colleagues to vote no, stand firm on the stance we all left that meeting with, and uh, enforce the on-duty staffing uh, that the fire department came forward with in their plan. And let's try to get these overtime numbers under control. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Councillor Enright. Yeah, like uh, Councillor Barlow said, this money is money that we already budgeted for. It was, uh, in fact, the original money for the codes uh, department uh, over time was taken right out of the budget. So uh, to expect the fire department to do all the codes work and do the rest of the work uh, for what was budgeted just for department overtime is just not realistic. I mean, we have to be realistic, and if, if we're looking for a change or something that has to be something different, we can't just cut the money out and say, okay, now what are we going to do? Uh, I feel that what is being asked for is justified, and uh, I, it, it was budgeted, and I feel that it's been budgeted with oversight. So I think we're, we're making uh, a decision that has actually been studied for the last eight months, and uh, I feel it's the right thing to do, and I'm going to be supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any other comments? Thank you. We went through the budget last year, and we were talking about the overtime, and we took so much out. I believe it was 200,000. We took 200,000 out, and we, like Mr. Barlow said, we held it hostage to see where it's going. Then we had the meeting, like Mr. Barlow said again. And truthfully, I haven't really seen nothing done myself. What are you saying? But the problem is we budgeted it there. I am going to support this for one reason. It's already budgeted there. This year coming up, we better see some changes. That's the bottom line. But I will support this one. Thank you, Councilor. Any other comments? Councilor <coughs> Campbell. Yes, thank you, Ron. I too will be supporting this, and I, I do so because it becomes a basic uh, math equation in the city. That is, uh, folks may not like paying overtime to the fire department or to anyone for that matter, and I understand that. And I think that's a, 
always an issue that we have to watch very carefully and uh, certainly make adjustments and create efficiencies when at all possible. In this particular case, we also have a revenue stream that uh, provides uh, a great deal of resources back to the city, and that is uh, in the ambulance service that we provide. Um, having looked at this very carefully, and in fact, uh, tracking this for the last several weeks based on a scenario that had been proposed by our fire chief, um, it is very obvious to me that we may be paying the overtime and even less over time if we proceed with, a, with, uh, with that plan. But on the other hand, we're also reducing our revenue. And in the end, we can reduce overtime, but we're going to reduce revenue more than we reduce overtime. And that's where I say we have a math equation. And in the end, as taxpayers, uh, we come out on the short end. And I think that revenue and revenue stream is, is very important. The other part of that, and in my mind the most important part of that, is the public safety issue. I think it's imperative that we maintain two ambulances as a minimum in this city. We have found that sweet spot. We have over the years made several changes in the fire department. Not only a reduction in overtime by about 40% over the last few years, but we've reduced the number of ambulances from five to two that we operate and maintain. We've also cut the number of firefighters from 65 down to 50, 66 down to 58. So we've made significant cuts in the, in the manpower as well. We are trying to find ultimately that sweet spot. This 100,000 in my mind, it, is, is, it was budgeted it, and it was done so that we all could keep a very close eye on how the money was being spent and making adjustments and changes as needed. I think we continue to do that, uh, but I'm very comfortable with this expenditure and also with two ambulances running for the public's sake. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? <clears throat> yes, Councilor Van. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I agree with Council Barlow in the sense of the discussion that we did have, and I guess I direct the question to you just to weigh in about the uh, staffing situation, because that does come from your office. And I understand that you and Chief Groby have had several discussions mm -hmm. about that. <coughs> I appreciate both your inputs on how this goes in the discussion. Uh, I will be in favor of this because it is the money that we budgeted, and as I've said before, uh, when we execute the budget, we're giving the public a certain amount of uh, continuity that that's the budget that we're going to execute. Uh, if this was additional funds, that would be a different discussion. But this is the money that we budgeted from the beginning of the year. This is not more money. This is what we originally set aside for them. So I'll be supporting it in that respect. But I would like you to weigh in on your staff. Thank you. Yeah, well, is, uh, is any other comments from you? Um, this is a work in progress. This is something we've been working on for the last couple of years. And as Councilor Kaplan said, we've made some, some dramatic improvements. It's not perfect working on it. I think one of the, the, the facts that uh, Councilman Kaplan did mention is the fact that the response time for the Sweden Fire Department is under four minutes. For the other, the competition is anywhere from 14 to 17 minutes. It may not seem like a lot of time, but if you're the one with chest pains or with a uh, bleeding condition, it could mean the, the difference between life and death. Our responsibility is, is twofold. It's, it's to protect the investment in the city. It's to make sure we don't uh, use your taxpayers' dollars uh, inefficiently. But it's also to provide safety, to provide a safe city. Um, I think if you look at cities throughout the world, there's no safety. You can't live in a gated community where you have private security. We're an open city. And uh, we have elderly people, we have young people, we have all kinds of people. And I think the fact that we offer, as a city, a, a fire department that has of ambulance service, it generates revenue. It's like if, if you're a husband and wife, and uh, your wife has a part-time job, and it doesn't pay it as much as you'd like, so quit your job. What you're really finding out is that now you need even less revenue. Um, so that we can do this better. And I guess the point that, that Councilor uh, Van Buren wants to know is that are we going to continue to tweak this? Yes, yes we are. Uh, I'm going to be meeting with uh, 
our chief of building, and uh, we can find a better way to run uh, the fire department. They've made incredible improvements in Madigan. And we shouldn't lose track of that. What they've done is remarkable. So I'm very proud of that. But we will continue to do so. Are there any other comments? Yes, Councilman Bob. I'd just like to remind every, all the councilors here that the department's already short 30 or 40, 20 to 30,000 dollars. Spending that in public. So that we need to bring in the role of the time to the department for the remainder of this year. I, I don't want to see you come back to the past two thousand. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? No. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 5 1. Uh, clerk, please call resolution. 277. Mr. Approve attendance at the 60th annual Nikon Fall Training School to be held September 27th through October 2nd, 2015 in Lake Placid, New York, at the request of Deborah P. Code, City Chamberlain. Councilor Kaplowitz and Councilor uh, Van Buren. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. <clears throat> Please call resolution 278. Is to approve attendance at the 60th annual Nikon Fall Training School to be held September 27th through October 2nd, 2015, in Lake Placid, New York, at the request of Deborah P. Code, City Chamberlain, for Deputy City Chamberlain. Councilor Walker, Councilor Is there any discussion? See none. Please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 279. Mr. Approve attendance at the New York State Public Employers Labor Relations Association annual conference to be held July 21st through 24th, 2015, in Saratoga Springs, New York, at the request of M. Rita Tickle, personnel director. Walker, Councilor Van Buren. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 279 A. Would waive the rules of the Common Council to present resolution numbers 279 B through 279 D from the floor without committee consideration. Uh, Van Buren and Councilor McLaughlin. Please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 279B. Would be to approve a solid waste license for the year 2015. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Walker. Any discussion? Seeing <clears throat> none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Please call resolution 279C. Would authorize the mayor to sign a proposal with Connecticut Planning and Development for Consulting Services. Van Buren? Councilor Enright. Any discussion? Van Buren. Uh, I spoke with our planning and zoning director regarding this. Uh, this is stemming from the committee that you put together regarding $500 million grant uh, competition that's been proposed by the governor. We've met several times and discussed with various uh, community stakeholders, people from the county as well as the court. Uh, public, this is a large scale grant that has been uh, opened up by the state to promote collaborative efforts to the region as a whole. So the city will uh, be representing a piece of what gets presented uh, in the overall scheme of things. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's in our best interest to make sure that the city's piece shines uh, very brightly. So we want to make sure that if our uh, region does win, that the money is getting shifted into uh, our area for the projects that we'd like to see done. Part of this will be 
uh, meeting with local stakeholders, uh, members of the council, <coughs> the mayor, department heads, as well as other people in the community that have a, a stake in this. And they will be taking this and putting it all together with data and some metrics for our planning and zoning department as well as our community development department to uh, continue packaging for the overall presentation that we will be a part of when this all is submitted. Uh, they're very small uh, time frame for us to get this done. Uh, that's why it needs to come off the floor. If anyone has any questions? Any other comments? Also, Barlow. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I just, we have an obligation here to make informed, responsible decisions on behalf of the taxpayers. And this is uh, kind of an issue that I'm close to. Uh, I've been attending the REDC meetings uh, whenever they have them and I'm pretty familiar with state politics and state government. And just for the public, I'll somewhat repeat what Councilor Van Buren said. I may go a little more in depth. The state settled 12 lawsuits, settled or won 12 lawsuits. Of those 12 lawsuits, it equated to $5 billion. $1.5 billion was allocated in the state of New York's budget on April 1st when the budget passed. Uh, that $1.5 billion is divided into uh, three separate $500 million prizes. Those prizes are up for grabs. Uh, the state was divided minus New York City and minus Buffalo. The state was divided in, into seven regions. Those seven regions are to compete for these three $500 million prizes. So three out of the seven will win. We're obviously in the central New York region. And uh, the governor appointed counts, uh, councils who will form these plans and submit them to the judge. The judge uh, is a council in Albany and the governor who picks the winners. So my point is it's the job of the regional councils to actually form the plan, the comprehensive plan, and forward it to uh, the governor. So when it comes to this proposal tonight, what the proposal is actually asking for is $20,000 to hire a consultant from Connecticut form the city of Oswego's plan. Uh, my response is, uh, I just have a couple points I want to make. I've been attending these REDC meetings, and they've been asking for a lot of public input. They've been open to the public and so forth. And I just have a problem with, uh, they're taking so much time to hear the public, and, and the city of Oswego didn't even bring this to committee. Now, the state budget passed April 1st. Anybody who watches state politics knew that this competition was coming since last fall. So the sense that there's urgency now and it has to come off the floor with no public input uh, somewhat rubs me the wrong way. Uh, plans are due in August and uh, they're submitted to the governor October 5th, I believe. And uh, so I just, I, that rubs me the wrong way that we're not uh, just voting on it coming off the floor and it didn't go through the appropriate council and for a reason I don't know. The second part is, even our, the Central New York Regional uh, Council isn't even hiring a consultant. Uh, actually, I was just at the meeting last week and uh, one of the members said that uh, they're very proud of the fact that they're not hiring a consultant. They're using local people, local stakeholders, the people who know the community best, um, to come up with their plan. And they think that that'll be more beneficial when it's submitted to the governor. So I'm not sure why, if our regional council isn't even hiring a consultant, why the city of Oswego needs to pay $20,000 to an out-of-state consultant. Uh, my stance is have the locals do it. Uh, they know the community best, have several people from uh, uh, diverse backgrounds chime in and come up with their own plan with local talent and submit that to the council. The third point uh, that I just want to make is I guess if we really want to spend $20,000 to an out-of-state consultant, up with our own plan. I would just ask that instead of approving this tonight, go back. If we do win the ultimate competition, it'll be beneficial to several people involved, maybe some local stakeholders. Uh, some, some, we have some great companies, uh, great entities uh, that help us out with several projects all the time. Maybe see if they want to help us uh, pay an out-of-state consultant $20,000. It'll be mutually beneficial if we win. I don't see any problem asking them to kick in to form a plan. And I would just ask that these are, that's, they're facts that I just laid out. It's not, uh, you know, that's the process. That's the correct process. Um, I'm not sure of any other 
municipalities, certainly not our size, uh, that I know of, are spending this sort of money uh, com coming up with their own plan. So I just ask that you guys take that into consideration. And uh, I would either vote no on this to authorize this money, or perhaps table it and explore some other avenues. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Would you like to make a motion to the table? Uh, let's, I don't, if you guys have feedback, we'll hear your feedback, and then I, I'll make a motion to the table. <coughs> uh, I would just say this uh, recommendation is coming from the committee the mayor appointed, uh, local stakeholders, the uh, director of the port, uh, members of the hospital, the college, uh, several other large stakeholders, that this is the direction that they take, uh, Mr. Treadwell from the county. These are those folks that believe this might be in our best interest. I certainly respect whatever the decision is made. That is where this direction came from. Like Mr. Van Buren just said, uh, you got the director of the port, county. Why can't they help us fund it? Why do we have to fund it all? I'd, I'd like to see this table too, so i take a motion if someone did that. Council Walker, motion to table. I'll make a motion. Second that. Second, Council Barlow. Please call the roll. The motion to table. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Walker. Yes. Council Barlow. Yes to table. Council Van Buren. Uh, no to table. Council Kaplowitz. Yes to table. Council Enright. No to table. The resolution passes 4 2. To table. <coughs> Call resolution 279 D. It's to authorize the mayor to execute a five year lease agreement with the Oswego players for use of building number 30 at Fort Ontario. Councilor McLaughlin. I have a second. Councilor Walker. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kapowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright. Yes. The resolution passes 6-0. Let's call resolution 280. There's a motion to move to executive session to discuss the pros acquisition sale or lease of real property regarding 1 through 7 West Seneca Street. Councillor and Councillor Kapowitz. Any discussion? Please Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kapowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6 0. Thank you. We will now go into executive session. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. The resolution passes 6-0.